But if you look at the rates markets, I mean, 10-year yield in Spain is down some three basis points. I've got this chart, G hashtag BTV1803, showing showing that uh, the Spanish yield spread is tighter than the Italian one. Do you think markets are underpricing the risk in Spain and Catalonia? To a degree, yes. I mean, certainly when we look at it from the perspective of the rates market, there is this sense of complacency when it does come to some of the risks. But again, it's the same problem we've been facing for some time now. There's just too much liquidity in the market and that money has to go somewhere. And despite all the risk in uh, Catalonia, and of course we could extend that geopolitically to North Korea and, and the U.S. and the situation on the Korean Peninsula, the market uh, doesn't, really, uh, doesn't really blink. It just it continues to move in one direction. And uh, again, there's only one thing that could really shift that materially going forward, and that is central bank accommodation. I want to the degree to which uh, they remove that accommodation going forward. Mm -hmm. And what do, are you expecting then uh, from the ECB at the October 26 meetings? There's a lot of expectation around that. Right. So a lot of it's already been priced in over the course of the summer, especially on the on the FX side. We've seen the euro rally tremendously, and that was on the expectation that the ECB was going to announce some sort of taper program. Mm -hmm. Now it comes down to semantics. I mean, do we get uh, uh, you know monthly purchases of 30 billion going forward? Is that scaled back to say 25 billion going forward? And to what degree extent do they leave that in place over in 2018? Mm. I mean, despite what they say, we do feel that there is a scarcity issue when it does come to the amount of assets that the ECB could buy under the current framework. So they'll tweak that to a certain extent. And additionally, how do they address some of the other issues like reinvestment and whether or not they reaffirm that commitment to keeping the deposit rate where it is? Mm. Yeah, and on this question, let me point viewers to a chart in our Bloomberg chart library. It's so much fun to go through. It's number 2029. And my cursor is right over the part that we're most interested in, which is the corporate and uh, sorry the, the securities held for monetary policy purposes you know by the ECB and, and that's going to start dropping down at some point but at what point does the ECB get into trouble in terms of what it can do it's already been cheating a little bit on the margin you know buying too much from one country because it ha doesn't have enough from the larger capital key countries Right, that's a good question. I mean, it really depends on whether or not we can we can expect to see them uh, maintain their commitment to keeping purchases uh, in sync with where the capital key is. And so far, they've done a decent job of doing that. They've been buying a, certainly a, a little bit less of uh, German bonds and uh, and French uh, bonds as well. But again, in terms of uh, what they do going forward, there is this commitment to keeping as much accommodation in place for as long as possible. And of course, that ties back to their inflation mandate as well, which is still running somewhat below uh, uh, where they would like it to be.